Today I'm going to be talking about the fuel that drives the worry engine, intolerance of uncertainty. Hi everyone. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about intolerance of uncertainty, the fuel that drives the worry engine. But before we get into that, just a couple of disclaimers to go over. I am a registered psychologist in the province of British Columbia, Canada, and this video is for informational purposes only. It is not intended as a replacement or substitute for advice from your doctor or mental health professional. Now with those two things out of the way, let's talk about intolerance of uncertainty. This video is the continuation of this series of videos that I'm doing on worry management. And in the last video, I talked about a model for understanding worry. And I talked about it as the bare bones engine of worry, the, the driving force behind worry. So if you think of that as the engine of worry, what we're talking about today, intolerance of uncertainty, that's the fuel that drives this worry engine. So what is intolerance of uncertainty? Well, intolerance of uncertainty, one way to think about it is it's kind of like a psychological allergy. And if you think about how an allergy works, suppose I'm allergic to dust and I walk into a room, all it's going to take is for there to be just a little bit of dust in that room and it's going to cause a big allergic reaction on my part. Sneezy, watery eyes, that sort of thing. Whereas somebody else who's not allergic to dust, walks into the exact same room, has no reaction at all. So for people who are intolerant of uncertainty, all it takes is for there to be just a little bit of uncertainty in a situation, and it leads to a big emotional reaction, a big emotional response. So you can think of intolerance of uncertainty kind of like falling on a continuum, where on one end of the continuum are people who are highly tolerant of uncertainty. These are the people who, uh, for example, uh, can travel to Europe with a one-way ticket and a quarter in their pocket. They have no idea what they're going to be doing for work, what they're going to do for money, uh, how long they're going to be gone, where they're going to go, but they just see it as a big adventure. They'll figure it out as they go. Whereas on the other end of the continuum, if a person is highly intolerant of uncertainty and they're traveling to Europe, they're going to have a clearly laid out itinerary. They're going to know exactly what they're doing on every day. They're going to have backup plans for if the weather changes, they're going to know exactly how they're going to get from point A to point B. Everything is going to be highly organized. Those people are highly intolerant. Of uncertainty. Now what we know is that for people who worry a lot, they tend to gravitate more towards the highly intolerant end of this tolerating uncertainty spectrum. So the way intolerance of uncertainty works is it's kind of like a lens through which a person views the world. So you have this person and they're faced with an uncertain situation. And they're looking at this uncertain situation through this intolerance of uncertainty lens. What the intolerance of uncertainty lens is going to do is it's going to bend the person's perception or prediction of what's going to happen to be a negative outcome. So they're going to think about all of the positive, all of the possible negative things that can occur when faced with that uncertain situation. But you can probably also recognize on a logical level that uncertain situations don't always lead to negative outcomes. That there can be a range of potential outcomes that uncertain situations can result in. So some are negative, but some uncertain situations can turn out neutral. Or they're neither good nor bad, they just kind of are what they are. And then there are some uncertain situations that turn out really positively. So they turn out much better than a person anticipated the situation was going to turn out. I call these happy accidents. 
not expecting them to happen. They happen and they're really great. So uncertain outcomes can fall anywhere on this continuum of possible outcomes. But the intolerance of uncertainty lens prevents a person from really considering the possible positive or neutral outcomes. And all the person ever focuses on is the potential negative outcomes. So it's not so much the uncertainty that is so sort of scary or anxiety provoking for a person who's intolerant of uncertainty. It's not the uncertainty itself. It's what they feel that uncertainty represents, which is the negative outcome the negative potential outcome that they focus on, that this intolerance of uncertainty lens bends their predictions and their perceptions to be all about. So what do you do with this information? How exactly does this work? And how can you use it to better manage worry? Well, think about the dilemma that someone who is intolerant of uncertainty experiences. On one hand, I'm intolerant of uncertainty. Yet on the other hand, there's uncertainty in the world around me. And so I have to try to find some way of reconciling these two things, the inherent uncertainty of the world and my intolerance of uncertainty. And invariably what people do is they tend to focus on ways of trying to eliminate uncertainty in their world trying to control their world, trying to uh, be highly organized, try to seek lots of information, avoid things that they are uncertain about. It's all designed to try and eliminate uncertainty in the world. But how effective do you think that is? Do you think there is any way to fully eliminate uncertainty in the world? Well, the answer is no. Uh, if you think back to the original model of worry that I talked about, it starts with a trigger. And what I mentioned and what I pointed out is that anything can be a trigger. So anything can trigger worry. Anything can trigger uncertainty. Any situation can have uncertainty associated with it. So trying to eliminate uncertainty in the world as a way of trying to manage this intolerance of uncertainty is kind of like a losing battle. It's sort of like I'm at the bottom of a pit and I want to get out of the pit. And the approach I use to try and get out of the pit is to pick up a shovel and to start digging. Now I'm doing lots of work. I'm putting lots of effort and energy into trying to get out of the pit, but is picking up a shovel and digging actually getting me out of the pit? No, it's just a lot of work that's not actually getting me anywhere. And that's what I find for a lot of my clients who deal with excessive worry and struggle with excessive worry. They feel exhausted because everything they've tried to do to manage their worry hasn't really helped. All of the ways that they try and control their world, all of the ways that they try and gather information, all of the ways that they try to avoid or eliminate the uncertainty in their world isn't really helping. It's like I've got a bucket and I'm trying to fill that bucket with water, but the bucket's got a big hole in the bottom of it. So I'm constantly pouring water into the bucket, but the bucket's never getting full. I will never be able to fully eliminate uncertainty in the world. So the only way of dealing with this dilemma, the world has uncertainty in it, and I'm intolerant of uncertainty. The only way of really reconciling this dilemma isn't to focus on eliminating uncertainty from the world. It's to focus on becoming more tolerant of uncertainty. And that's one of the keys to worry management. So that's one of the things that we're going to be talking about in future videos. We're going to talk about how exactly you go about building tolerance for uncertainty. So 
I hope you found this video informative. I hope uh, this helps explain a little bit about intolerance of uncertainty and how intolerance of uncertainty can really fuel the worry process. I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas and questions about this. I'd also love to hear your ideas about future topics you'd like me to talk about. So please leave me some comments down below. If you're interested in seeing more of my videos or being alerted when I post a new video, please hit that subscribe button and you'll get notified uh, when I post a new video. So that's it for today. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video and I will see you in the next one.